Hi, thank you so much for joining me for the acronym explanation series. My name is Jen and I'm on a healing journey, breaking free from the destructive patterns of disordered eating and embracing a nourishing lifestyle. I am using an original acronym of the word nourisher to help guide my healing process. And in this series, I'm going to take a deep dive into each of the letters of the nourisher acronym in order to explain it to you further. So thank you for joining me and let's dig in. Hi, and thank you so much for joining me as we unpack the letter U in our Nourisher acronym. The letter U stands for Understand the Cycle, and this has been so critical for me in my healing journey, and I'm excited to unpack it together with you. So what is this cycle that we need to understand, and can we understand it? Well, the cycle is the disordered eating cycle. For me specifically, it would be the binge eating cycle, and it's the idea that there are predictable, a predictable pattern and progression of events or of internal experiences or of behaviors that happen in a cyclical fashion over and over again um, that kind of make up our eating disorders so our, or our eating disordered behavior. So let's unpack that a little bit what that might look like for me or what that might look like in the cycle. So the cycle typically, I mean, because it's a cycle, you could start it at any place, but I'm going to start to start the discussion at this idea of um, cravings or unmet needs. So typically what happens is there is an unmet either physical need that actually leaves you hungry um, or emotional need that, that makes leaves you feeling um, needy or at a, a loss or want internally um, could bring on pain or um, sadness, a variety of different emotions. And when we're in that, also fatigue, you could be in, in a, a need for rest. And when you're in this place of need, if those needs are not met, there can sometimes be a point where you kind of come to a bit of a breaking point where there's some type of trigger that pushes you into the next stage, which can be for me binge eating or some other type of um, disordered behavior in regards to body image or exercise or um, relationship with food. So for me, it would go into a binge eating. So for example, I could feel so tired and so fatigued that rather than doing a healthy um, expression of that to other people, maybe asking for help, maybe getting greater rest, maybe caring for my body by, um, you know, going for gentle walks or, or more renewable activities. I can get to this breaking point where I look for comfort, rest, satisfaction, companionship in food, and I eat a lot of it. I mean, it has not, it, it, it would not at all be unusual for me to sit down and eat 10 to 15 you know, chocolate bars in a sitting, um, multiple boxes of whatever, cookies or um, cakes, whatever I can get my hands on, um, chips I'm desperate when I was smaller, I would drink straight from the corn syrup bottle, whatever I needed to try to um, calm or to satisfy this, this unmet need, whether it was physical or emotional. So once we get into that binge habit, I, I mean, if, if you have been there before or whatever that destructive behavior is, when you recognize that it is destroying you, when you get to that point of feeling physically sick, ill, you start to feel disgusted with yourself, then we pop into this idea of shame and guilt. Now, remember that there's a difference between shame and guilt, that guilt is feeling very badly about what we've done. We feel that we've done a bad thing. Shame is feeling that you are a bad thing. You feel badly about who you are. And um, you can go into this very, very deep place of guilt and shame and feeling disgusted with yourself. And uh, it's a very, very low place. Uh, for me, physically, it has been very low before as I get to that binge spot where I feel so sick that um, I'm either, you know, vomitous, although I, I've never been uh, a perjurer, um, but this often, you know, if, if you are struggling with bulimic tendencies, this is where uh, the purging can come in and just a very, very deep low spot. Now, what gets you to the next spot? Um, typically, there's some type of a switch that you're trying to get out of that deep place of shame and guilt. And often what happens is there's this um, kind of resolve or decision to, I'm going to do good. I'm going to be good. I'm never going to do that again. I, I don't know. I would be a billionaire, <laughs> at least a millionaire, if I had, you know, money for every time that I said, I will never do that again. And then 15 minutes later, I'm in the car again, 
going to buy whatever else, more of whatever it is. Um, so, but there's this idea of, I will never do that again. I'm going to push that behavior away. And now I'm going to deeply be in control of this. And I'm going to often, this is when a pattern of restriction comes in. This is very, very typical for me. I'm never going to do that again. So I'm going to cut out all these bad foods. I'm never going to eat an ounce of sugar again. I'm never, I'm never, I'm never. And I get to a very restrictive diet for me, it's, you know, well, I'm not going to eat for the rest of the day, or I'm not going to eat for the rest of whatever, or I'm only going to drink liquids, or I'm going to go through all of these different things. And it tends to be a very restricting uh, pattern, but that restricting pattern is not sustainable for everyday life. Um, and then, you know, you, you try to hold on to this rest restriction so tightly, but that becomes so tiring. And the, the initial fatigue that I felt when I was going through this this pattern or the initial sadness or the initial physical hunger or whatever it was, it never went away. It was never satisfied. So it's still there and it comes up and that it starts to build and it builds. And again, and unless we deal with it in a healthy way, boom, we're right back to that, um, that disordered pattern again for me binging or whatever the case may be. Now, what I used to think, I was actually confronted with the fact that I had, um, an addictive relationship with food earlier on in my adult life. But what I thought of there, because I was kind of narrating it with this idea of it's a food addiction, I thought either I'm eating well, in which case I'm, I'm not eating any of the bad foods or the off limit foods or the restricted foods. And I'm only eating, um, you know, whatever I've determined is good at the time. Right. So I'm either eating really good, really well, I'm doing good with food or I'm doing bad with food, in which case I'm binging and I'm totally, um, you know, damaging my body, not living at all in alignment with my beliefs or values around food. So I, I, at any one time I, I was either doing good or bad. What I didn't realize was that at any one time I was either binging or restricting that at any one time I was still on this cycle. And when I was restricting, I was equally damaging my body and equally putting myself through stress um, by trying to hold on to these really, really rigid uh, elements of control um, that actually also weren't in line with my values. If I was going to um, encourage my daughters or encourage loved ones of how they could eat and enjoy food and um, also be responsible with food, they would not, I would not be encouraging them to eat the way that I was eating or to interact with food the way that I was interacting or, or treat my body the way that I was treating typically. So um, I was always on the cycle, not even realizing it. So it wasn't until I actually uh, came face to face with a diagnosis of an eating disorder and saw this cycle that I realized, wow, I am so bound by this cycle and I need to get off. So that is why I understand the cycle is, um, you know, number three in our nourisher acronym is because I think it is so critical that we're always able to examine and evaluate where am I on the cycle? How do I get off of the cycle? And if I'm, you know, if I'm feeling fatigued or if I'm, there is an emotional trigger or if I'm feeling guilt and shame, what is the most probable, um, based on the cycle, what's the most probable next step that I would go to and how can I divert? How can I get off of this? How can I deal with guilt and shame differently? I can deal with guilt and shame by uh, doing some confession, opening up to other people, actually going back to my values, asking for help. There's so many different things that I can do when I'm in that place to get me off of the cycle and not push me into um, the restriction part of the cycle. When I am restricting, I can, I can open up to others. I can then um, realize that um, I, I need to be embracing a more holistic, more value-driven um, relationship with food and or with exercise or whatever it happens to be. So we, if we know what the cycle is, we can identify where we are or where we're vulnerable that we could be, and we can know what would come next and we can help mitigate that. So I, I hope that that helps you understand why it is so critical that we know that we can use this vocabulary to talk about where we're at at the cycle, um, you know, draw out your own cycle. If you can share that with others um, so that they can help also articulate with you, how are you doing? And you can say, hey, I'm really triggered right now, or hey, I'm in the shame phase or whatever yours looks like. This can be very, very powerful tool to help you overcome and get out of the power of this cycle and live your best, most nourishing life. All the very best to you.